You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. What's up, punters and dribblers? Welcome back to All Talk for 2024, brought to you by the number one multivitamin in the game. Good day. Daily multivitamins. Uh, They're changing the world. Yeah, it is. And we thank Good Day for its support. Yeah, we thank Good Day for reaching out and uh, offering to sponsor All Talk. Yeah. Uh, 85, five-star reviews and counting. The punter and the dribbler cannot get enough of it. Thousands of dribblers uh, help to change their nutritional health. And people are foaming at the mouth. So why don't you give Good Day a try and the proof will be in the pudding. Or the packet, or the sachet, mm, sachet. as they say. Don't say packet. Uh, good day. Uh, be good. <laughs> BeGoodHealth.com.au is where you'll find it. Now, Eddie, I uh, couldn't think of a better way to start off all talk for 2024, and it wasn't something that, like you know, yeah, it wasn't necessarily immediately on the horizon in my mind. But we've got the opportunity to speak to this man, the one and only Mitchell Pierce, who's had, you know, a storied rugby league career of ups and downs, smiles and frowns. And someone I've never actually met, but sitting across from the bloke, still in good nick. He's in great nick. I'll be honest with the punter and the dribbler. Huge fan of Mitchell Pierce after this yarn. Yeah. Fucking terrific bloke. Very honest, open, raw, bears his soul at certain points. We have a good laugh. Uh, a great man, yep. a, a terrific yarner, Tom. Yeah, well. no, he is. He, he had good stories, and you can actually listen to more of those. He does a podcast now called Footy Talk with Todd Carney uh, out every Monday. You'll find that where you get your podcast. He's doing work, calling footy for Triple M. He's he's back. He's in Australia, and he's ready to fucking rip and tear Positive in dribblers. a very positive, way. positive and healthy way. Puns and dribblers, Mitch Pierce. You look great, man. You do. Thanks, boys. You look really good. <laughs> this is actually our new setup as well. You're the first one on new setup yeah. with these uh, yeah. these couches and shit. So, are you, are you comfy? Beautiful, yeah. It was France? Do you like France? I loved it, mate. Yeah, yeah. South I was France, unreal. Yeah? yeah. So where I was, we got Barcelona. We were just on the border of Spain. So it's a place called Perpignan. So it's a bit oh, more yeah. working class and like Nice and all that. Yeah. It's like right on the coast. So you got the beach. Beautiful man, and just going from lifestyle like, easy. That's what, like going from the fucking like what I imagine is just the pressure cooker of the NRL, just yeah. to being like, yeah. Well, footy was like we had a good team, so we made the GF. Yeah, the actual footy itself, like we train once a week. Get once fucked. a week. Well, you meant to train two, three, but <laughs> literally I go in halftime. <laughs> well, we'll kill it. Like we're going good, so. You know what I mean? It was yeah. a good environment. Everyone's happy. Don't change your winning formula. Yeah, well, if that's you're it. winning, half fuck. the time the coach would go in, he'd say, "Mate, you're a bit tight. Just rest up." So I beat the fucking <laughs> beach half the time. <laughs> Oh, you're taking it serious. But yeah. It's just not not all the other bullshit. Yeah. Area. It's good when you're like, if you come from NRL, we're used to that, and you're already like professional, and you go there, you're kind of in that frame of mind. So it's sort of. So as in like, you're already. Weight in, off the shoulders, you know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't like. Is that like you've already got that sort of professional approach, like generally speaking, or is it so that like you can sort of do what you need to do to be right? Yeah, yeah. It's still professional, but it's yeah. just, there's no media. You know, especially in France, like they just leave you alone a bit. You can travel as much as you can. That must yeah. have been such Go a up to Barca for a night, yeah. just have dinner, relax. Like it just gives you freedom. Yeah, you don't get that escape here, do you? No, no. Is that it's a cat- getting worse, man? <laughs> it's like it's so busy now. <laughs> is yeah. it? You're at Catalan, all right? Yeah, yeah. Cat- uh, Catalans, Cat- Cat- Catalans, Cat- Catalonians, they call them. There you go. Yeah. So, is that you know? One day a week training, stretching on the beach. Is that a Catalans thing, or is that a Super League thing? Now, I think different clubs like run the systems different. Our coach was good. Like he sort of he looked after. We had a fair few older boys, so yeah, yeah. or it's still professional. Like you're still training two or three t- times a week, but on the field, some days he just say to you like, "Just rest up, boys," and that was mm. his approach. Yeah. Mm. Some of the other clubs I know are full on NRL type standards. Like uh, I know Hull trained pretty hard, lots of wrestle, but like I hardly did a wrestle session in two years. So <laughs> things like that. A bit of a weight off the shoulders, but when you're fit, you sort of had that conditioning yeah. before. It was and kind you of played, like, you played 300 games already, so you knew how to wrestle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was falling off tackles by the end of it. <laughs> Legs were getting slow, but do you think you needed that change, like just to, and I mean, Catalan specifically? Like, do you reckon it, you would have been way more off it if you'd gone to a Super League club where you had to be, like, where they treated it like NRL and like were way more intense? Do you think you needed to just get the fuck away from it? All yeah, the freedom like, was good. Like even just. You know, just different culture, different languages, all that sort of stuff. I needed that. I was sort of, I was going to finish playing before I went. I had a bit of a rough year off the field and I was just burnt out and over footy a bit. Mm. And then off season, um, I was contemplating just giving it up, 
just finishing, moving on to the next thing. And then the opportunity came up. Jimmy Maloney retired. And I knew Steve Mac Steve McNamara, the coach from, mm. from the Roosters days. Um, so they kind of reached out. At the start, I was when you don't live overseas, you're like, fuck, that sounds massive yeah. like, to move. And I, I encourage anyone now to get, just go. Because once you go, you know what I mean, it opens up a whole different world for you. Yeah. And then, um, but yeah, they kind of kept – the first, first few times they called, I kind of knocked it back and then jumped on the opportunity. And then when I went, first year was a bit difficult to sort of get settled. But I um, had a couple of really solid mates there that, you know, brothers for life now. and yeah. Brothers for life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just Wait. <laughs> terrorist organisation. <laughs> but um, we did heaps together. Uh, Michael McAlorum, an English, great English player over there. Absolute legend. Tyra and May, we went over at the same time. So we did a heap of travel together and had some good success on the field. And was Napa over there as well? Yeah, Naps was there the first yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's... Uh, He's a champion, Naps. We yeah. had a good time. So we moved in together at the start. Uh, Naps only did the one year there. He enjoyed himself. I bet he did. Um, yeah, I heard. Yeah, we had... <laughs> <laughs> you boys know Naps? Yeah. 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 He's, uh, he's a good man. I was at a wedding with him recently, actually. Yeah. Spun me a few yarns. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's a weapon. <laughs> um, so then, what was the... Yeah, who'd you play in the grand final? You lost today. Lost to Wigan, yeah, which was disappointing. I did my hammy the week before. Oh, shit. Couldn't kick properly going into the game. Any excuse, I can make yeah, excuses yeah, now. Yeah, I'm no, finished. Mate, listen, we're big excuses. But I was right. disappointed. Wigan, like over there, so Wigan, St. Helens, I think Leeds, one of, they went on a bit of a dynasty for mm. a period. But Wigan and St. Helens have basically won, win every comp every year, so it's either one of them. And then Catalan's the last sort of four or five years. They've done a really good job there since Steve Mack took over. Um, started to recruit heaps more quality players, so the Dragons have been up there a bit more, but... Um, it's hard to beat Saints and Wigan over there. Yeah, right. And the footy over there, like north of England, oh, we all love our footy, but it's mad playing there. Like the atmosphere, all the northerners are just knockabout type of people and mm. they're just fanatics. So, Is it a different it well. type of cold? Like you're living in the south of France, sun in your dick, just living your life. <laughs> like then you got to go and play in the north of England. Is it like, what the fuck? Is it freezing? Yeah, it was difficult, but I sort of enjoyed it because it, you'd sort of go out there for warm up and it just hit you. So it was like being in an ice bath. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, fully. So you'd sort of be a bit edgy before the game and then it sort of woke you up. Yeah, okay. But um, as the season goes on, it actually gets pretty hot because you get the, the Europe summer. So yeah, you play through right. summer. So sometimes it's the opposite. You sort of prefer the start of the year where it's a bit colder. But yeah, yeah the fans are mad over there and spend heaps of time in and around Leeds. Wigan, heap of the boys I played with, a couple of Sam Tompkins, Mike, uh, Michael McAlorum I was speaking about. It's about six or seven of the Northerners that were in my team. So yeah. spend heaps of time in and around Leeds. How did you, yeah, you find the footy over there? Like yeah, generally, yeah, it's different, different standard. Um, that's a that sounds like you're being nice. I can't tell. <laughs> no, nah, it's it. like the top teams, it's a different style of footy. Like, yeah, it's hard for, was, yeah, trying a lot of boys ask. that come from here, like your first year, you got to adapt language, different stadiums, new team, and the standards. Like in NRL, you probably got more quality across the board, and the speed of the game's a lot quicker, so the style's a bit different, mm. and you got a lot of better players to rely on around you, sort of thing. Mm. Or over there, um. It's just a different style. It's a bit more open. They encourage playing a bit more footy, that type of stuff. So, but yeah, the top teams like St. Helens, I, I played them my first game. I couldn't believe how much, like, they just wrestled the fuck out of you. Yeah, right. And that was a bit of a reality check, you know, like freezing cold, slippery ball, and you didn't get the same kind of ruck speed that you get back here. Mm. So that was, that was interesting. But yeah, the second year, we, we had a really good year. We had a great team over there. We just fell short, which was disappointing. So. Would have been nice to win to yeah. keep going back there, and but still good times. Was there uh, any thought around sticking around? Like, were you always going to retire? Would you, was there a thought of sticking around after you retire and like living over there, continuing your life over there? Well, my, my missus is French. Oh, nice. So she's come back with me, but we'll definitely be spending plenty of time back over there. So uh, she's from Perpignan. Um, so you get that Euro visa. Yeah, oh, that's it. Yeah. So she'll probably, hopefully, ideally spend some time here and then spend plenty of time back there. Got plenty of mates there now and. Feels like home over there, so yeah. How's Part your French? Uh, Oopu. <laughs> <laughs> it's improving. I've spent heaps of time around Frenchies since I've had time off after footy, traveling, and went to Bali and then fair bit of Europe just with Frenchies. But, yeah, um, it's a good thing too, right? So you can speak yeah. a little bit, but when they talk too much, you can just shut off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the classic sleeper. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's a difficult language to pick up. The funny thing is when you go over there. Majority of the team, like even the French boys, you're sort of forced to speak English because there's so many expats. I was a bit blown away when I went there because out of respect, 
we should be speaking their language yeah. as their team and yeah, we're yeah, forcing yeah. them to speak English. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit bizarre, but um, like the head coach speaks English in most of the meetings. Right. There's a French assistant coach who's, who's a great fella, but um, he speaks a fair bit of French during the meetings. We, we get frustrated, but you can't yeah. blame him. It is a French team. Absolutely. But um, can you yeah. understand it? Like, can you are you pretty being over there and being like so immersed in it, or at least yeah. that it's all around you? Can you can you understand it? Like, what's a what sort of level are we talking here? Yeah, I'm all right. You're like, all right. Yeah, like the missus obviously speaks it. One of her friends has moved over as well, so they speak it at home. Um, I just have trouble picking up stuff like that. I was shit house at school. <laughs> Some people I reckon have that gift where they can speak mm. three or four languages. Yeah, yeah. I wish I, I had it. <laughs> when you're over in Europe, be mad just to be able to go to different countries and pick it all up, adapt straight away. But um. My wife speaks Croatian, so I asked. She's like first her first language is Croatian. Her and her mum speak it all the time, and I've been with her for fucking sixteen years, and I know fuck all, <laughs> and it's like a bone of contention in our household. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? So I was interested to know how well you've, you've done doing way better than me. Well, he's doing. But a lot I don't better. live you, in Croatia. <laughs> that's the only. Yeah, that's I think you should give yourself some credit though. Well, you're essentially living in Croatia at home, though, right? <laughs> so yeah, bonjour, bonjour, ça va, qu'est-ce que tu fais? Comment ça va? Commerce of art, exactly. You're good, eh? Dude, ah, bien. I know Jemapel Edward. Yeah. And dude, <laughs> your accent's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good, a good isn't start. it? You can get a, a baguette at the bakery with off yeah. the back of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Mr. Laforgue, my uh, French, French teacher. teacher. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. seven. <laughs> um, One of the goats. So are you excited to come back? Like, is it nice uh, to get back into Australia? Yeah, it's been good. Um, picked up a bit of an opportunity with Triple M, so yeah. doing some commentary. Did my first game on Sunday, which was good experience. How'd you find it? Yeah, it was good. It's mad. Uh, I thought that when you retire, you sort of don't know how you're going to feel, if you're going to miss the game and that type of stuff, especially being over there. Um, obviously, like I said, there was heaps of freedom around footy. So coming back into the fishbowl here of NRL and that type of thing, mm. didn't know what to expect. Went to the Roosters game on Friday night against South and it was just good watching from a spectator's point of view. So yeah. I'm enjoying it. It's, you know, your respect for the players goes up tenfold as soon as you finish because everyone just looks so big and strong and you yeah. wonder how you, you kept up for so long but um yeah it's been good coming back and just getting into the next transition yeah so you've got triple m you're doing the you're doing you're calling games then you've got the podcast with toddy yeah me and toddy are doing footy the, talk i'll get that we'll put the proper i'll get the fucking proper name up i, I do know but is it called footy talk footy talk yeah, footy talk. yeah right so you guys do that on monday yeah we're great mates through our footy days and um so it's been good sort of Aligned and worked out well, so we're yeah. doing that on Mondays. And me and Toddy got some ideas to do a bit of stuff around halves, some development in and around some some young halves. Nice. Um, and wouldn't mind doing a bit of coaching stuff as well. So yeah, right. So you still you definitely want to stay around the game. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind trying to <coughs> open up to a few other things. I don't know what that is yet. I've got many other skills. Um, <laughs> find them. Uh, yeah, gotta find them fast. But yeah, staying involved. I love to do some, especially in the development stuff. Yeah, with some younger halves and. Um, yeah, stay involved with the game. How much of your experience throughout your career, the highs, the lows, the up, all, like all that sort of shit, like how much of that, the lessons you've learned, like is that something you want to impart on younger halves? Is there any? Is that sort of where you? Yeah, I'd love as to, well as obviously <coughs> the skill. Yeah, I'd love to do some mentoring stuff. Uh, I made a big change. I don't drink anymore. Really? Um, How so long's that been going for? About a year and a half. Oh wow! Well yeah, done, yeah, yeah. So I just that's huge. Yeah, it was massive. I, I sort of got. Um, a group of mates, I said, Tyrone and, and Mickey sort of led the way over there for me. Um, first year, I, I won't lie, I went pretty hard. <laughs> had plenty of good times. Uh, you know, and uh, it was just, honestly, I had an epiphany. I had a big night in Sydney one night <clears throat> when I came back. And uh, just that same pattern that sort of just fell back my career into went it. a little bit. I was always focused on footy, but alcohol got in the way plenty of occasions. And um, I had a big night and something just changed. I had this weird weird sort of wig out um they happen plenty of times but <laughs> had this weird wig out and and something just i just felt all this 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 shame for something just to change mm. and then ever since then i went back and then had probably the best year and a half of my life sober so really i uh, spent as i said my two mates there we did plenty of travel together they, they were sober before me and um you know together we did it you know it was it was easy when you got a f group of boys doing it together yeah uh they sort of pushed we pushed each other and they were the big influences on me and since then, I've sort of come back and, and stayed on that path. Was it difficult at first? Like, and uh, you know, like as in, did you, was it a craving thing? Or you know how like you can associate like, oh, you go out to dinner, you have wine or a beer or whatever. Like, was that just that initial process difficult? Like, yeah. I guess, you know, because it also helps to leave out maybe like social anxiety when you're out. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. A lot of it's that social anxiety. <laughs> it's habit too, isn't it? Like coming in as a young player as well, or just 
I was always inclined to that that way. I always loved a good time ever since I was a teenager. You always wanted to get up to no good. But um, I suppose um, coming into footy, it was a big part of the culture. Mm. Coming in, having a beer, especially as a young halfback, you earn a lot of, lot of respect. Playing well and then having a drink with the boys, that's how you connected. Um, and through my career, there's plenty of times I didn't drink. There was there was lots of times I'd stay off the off the off the alcohol during the season. Um, footy was always number one, but it was just that cycle. And different people can handle things differently. And mm -hmm. for me, I've always just just flipped out my personality and mm -hmm. been a roller coaster. So um, yeah, I'm glad that I made the move and plenty of good things happening off the back of it. How good's that? That's awesome. Well done, man. Love Thanks that. Mate. That's yeah. great stuff. Yeah. So in terms of the coaching, are you are you working with any clubs at the moment or are you just sort of finding your way now you're back in Sydney? Um, I might be doing a bit of stuff with the Roosters, yeah. <coughs> just with the development squad there. We got um, went in there the other day actually and gave Jared his 300th jersey, Jared Hargraves. Oh, How good. Nice. Yeah, it was pretty special. So caught up with a couple of people when I got back and, and got asked to go in and give Jared that, which was... Um, Special, what a player he's been. Um, Did you have to like write a speech or some shit there? Like, what's that? It's some, you know, sometimes when you have to do like a something in front of your mates, it's almost like way more intense than if it was you just hard have to speak to someone. When I went in there, with the respect he's got, all the boys all ended up speaking before me. So Robbo oh, spoke, right. and then all the boys jumped in and sort of said all their their bits. So when I, by the time I got up, <laughs> everyone had sort of said everything I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a bit of a letdown, but um, <clears throat> oh, he knows how much I love him and. Um, the respect I got for him, what a player he's been. Like, I, know. I don't think anyone's played 300 games harder than he has. No, no way. Um, I heard someone say he probably would have played 400 if he hadn't been suspended so many times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just an animal. And everything he does around the club there, you know, everyone that speaks about him, you know, knows the influence that he's had all around the boys there and, and all that type of thing. So, um, yeah, that was good. But went back around there. A lot of the old boys... Boyd Corden, assistant coach there, Mitch Orbison and Jake Friend are doing all the development stuff there. So see what see what pans out there. Did you almost come back to the Roosters when you were were you over playing in the for Catalan and they almost brought you back? Yeah, there was an opportunity to maybe come back, but my legs were getting slower and slower and slower. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're just like, nah, yeah, I, honestly, I probably feel like I probably could have played one more season. Um, like I was still playing decent footy over there. I know it's a bit slower in in Super League, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, to be honest, I was just mentally just over that grind and I was keen especially going overseas and traveling and seeing mm. so much other stuff that you can live your life mm. and how you can live your life it probably just made me realize there's other stuff new path to take so that was that made my just my decision in the end how was uh did is it true that benji gave you a call i should have come back to the tigers yeah he did how was that <laughs> <laughs> did you just sort of like oh, fuck i'm retired <laughs> nah bro was that a well, quick conversation well, that was during the year when i sort of hadn't made my decision up um, I won't lie, I was sort of taken, taken back. I was in the south of France, you know, just getting through the, the days there and, and, and enjoying my footy there. And um, I thought I was done. Like, <laughs> I thought I was a has-been, to be honest, yeah, back yeah. here. And then when that came up, um, obviously I investigated it for a, for a couple of days. It's, mm. it's, it's a, you know, it feel, makes you feel good if someone wants you. Yeah, of course. Um, and I was over there. I sort of you know, thought about it for a bit. And then you know, I was happy over there. I was committed to my teammates over there. Mm. Loving my lifestyle there, and um, but yeah, would have been interesting if that. Obviously. Is there a part of the decision to not come back to Tigers specifically, like that you can kind of be on a bit of a hiding to nothing? Like, it might be fun to come back and test yourself in the NRL, but like in a club that respectfully, at the time at least, were fucking shit. Like, <laughs> like, you, know, like you kind of go. Well, they got the spoon. They, they yeah, got the spoon. Like, you know, you're like, fuck. Do I want to just come back and get the shit? Not to say out? you wouldn't have taken them to the yard. You yeah. might have bought it. Yeah, exactly. But you know, like, was there is there a part of that where you're like, I don't actually need that pressure? Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I was. I think it was. I think I was getting closer to thinking it was going to be my last season. Um, in my, in my heart, I felt like it was going to be my last season. And then I was committed too, you know. I'm not someone who just gets up and walks away. So I was mm. committed to my teammates. I had great friendships there. I loved the club there. I was committed to try and get us a premiership over there. We fell short, but we had a great year, great memories. So, um, yeah, that's probably why I didn't come back. But like I said, it's as a player, as anyone, it's good to get you get that validation that someone still yeah. <laughs> wants you, especially when you're over there. So, mm. I was, yeah, I, I appreciated the, the call and, and that type of thing. But... And obviously, Dad played there too. So uh, back in the eighties, oh, 80s. that's right. So of course. there was that little thing of oh, could I go back there and do one year? Yeah, where Dad played and that type of thing. But um, here I am, I retired. I didn't even make that connection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Punters and dribblers, as always, we are brought to you by our good friends at Ned's, the betting platform of choice here at Hello Sport.
at about even. That's right. If you were following my profile on the weekend, you would have made money, good money, good, honest, regular money. Well, they would have money. seen you make money. No, but if you're following me, yes. you would have made money yes. if you followed me because I was winning if all you weekend to, long. If you were to peruse my profile, what you would see is one of the great run of outs. Uh, zero from 28. Zero from 28. I repeat, zero from 28. Follow Tom at your own peril. But you can follow him if you want using the Neds profile. We're also in the Neds group, about even group. The passcode to get in is... Dribbler. That's it. There's over 5,500 in there now, yeah. which is... Uh, we're short of one group and one group only, which is the open racing group. Yeah, which you don't need a passcode to get in. So, so uh, we're absolutely flying in there. We're having the time of our young lives. Mm. Come across. Neds is the best. We all know it. I'm the best punter of all time. We all know it. Come follow me. I'm hot right now. Don't, don't listen to me. I suck. You win some, you lose more. For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. So you're obviously, you, you said you, you, you've been back in the sheds with the Roosters, you've been hanging out at the club a little bit more. Well, how's that been, being back at the club? Obviously, you know, you left, what, five, maybe more, six, seven years ago now? Yes, what was it, seven years ago? Yeah. yeah. Has that been great to be back around the club? Have you been nostalgic about your time there? Um, it was, so I've only just sort of come back, so mm. it was special to go back um, to give Jared the jersey. I've sort of been away from it all. Um, I think when you win a comp at a club, and I was there for so long, mm. the way I left was disappointing. Um, but as you get older and you, you see things for what they are, it was a great move from the club. They got one of the best halfbacks ever. They replaced mm. me with a better player, and, <laughs> they, and they got the win. So you see that, you know, you finish and you lose that competitive edge and you see things for what they are. Yeah. Um, it was a great move from them, but you know when you when you're at a club like that, like most of those boys, we went through from 16 to premiership days. We played, I played there for 12 years. Yeah. Guys like Boyd Cordner, Jared, Mitch Orbison, Jake Friend, they're like they're real friends, you know. And you go through footy and you you, you connect with a lot of people, lots of great people, but you have real friends and those 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 brothers that will be always mates, brothers for life. Brothers for life. <laughs> um, so yeah, going back in after being away for a bit, you know, you can feel that that love and it was good to go back in those walls and, and see my, my true friends and, and people in the staff as well that I've had a lot to do with. So if the opportunity works out to go back there and do some development stuff, I'll be open mm. to, open open to that. Would, was 2018, 2019 around like first week in October, were they were they tough weekends? Watching as the in boys like watching the boys win the... From Newcastle? Yeah. Um, I think I was pissed most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> back then. Um, yeah, the first year was difficult when I left. Obviously... You're proud, you, 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 you want the best for them, but you're a competitor. So, mm. um, but it was hard because obviously I generally cared about my mates there. Like my, I wanted to see, you know, Michael just, just spoke about those boys that were playing. I'm happy for them. Yeah. Just, that's over overrides the competitive side of things when it comes to supporting them. But obviously seeing them, them win. I remember I was in Melbourne actually. I think I went down for the Melbourne Cup. Oh yeah. So I, had a, I, I watched it in a pub in Melbourne that first premiership. They beat Melbourne, didn't they? I did. Sure, that first one? Yeah. Uh, whatever. What year was that? Yeah, that was, was Melbourne and Canberra. I think, yeah, yeah Melbourne and Canberra. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like like I said, it was, it was, I enjoyed Newcastle, but it was a different experience. First couple of years, I had, the first year I played there, we had a really good year. I teamed up with, with Kalen there. We were in a side that was lower down at the bottom of the ladder, coming off three wooden spoons. It was a golden point when you get Manly, your first game. Yeah. I'm a Manly fan, so you fucked it. <laughs> I had to kick that. I would have got beers thrown at my head. <laughs> Booed out of Newcastle, but um, but yeah. So that was a that was a, it was a really enjoyable year. I think about all the years I've played. That first year in Newcastle, new environment, mm. great city up there. Getting out of Sydney, uh, getting settled up there, new bunch of boys. I had I enjoyed my footy there. So watching the grand final <coughs> was a bit difficult, but I had a good time. I was in a good place, so it was all good. When do you f when do you find out when you're at the Roosters that there's like cronk whispers going around like when does that sort of come across your desk yeah that was the i've spoke about it before that was a disappointing thing because i, I didn't find out till late but as, as as you get older like a, the same thing happens at every club it's just the way business is and uh but th that was the way it sort of given your history at the club though right like that there's a different element to it it's not just like you know, you've just come. You've been there for a couple of years, like. But so, but how do you hear about it in the media? Do they come and tell you? Yeah, it was in the off season, and that was where I was disappointed because it came out, <coughs> and it wasn't sort of upfront from the start. That's pretty fucking hectic, hey! Like not being able to come and speak to you about it. Yeah, at the time it was it was disappointing, but um, 
I'm not trying to rate, like bring up old wounds. Just, <laughs> yeah. We were talking about just with the Mansour shit, like yeah, yeah. The, the other day, yeah. um, with Kempi and how like Mansour wasn't told he was leaving the club, even though he might have expected it to come. And then Kempi was saying a story about how Wayne Bennett told him that if he stayed for less money, he'd start in the wing next year, and then the next year he didn't start on the wing. And it's just like just these little things with NRL, and then you know Kempi's like, ah, oh, look, it's just footy. Yeah. It's just footy. And I just find that that's like a dismissive way to sort of like paper over what is almost just like poor, like treating people poorly. Mm. Do you know what I mean? No, it's just, I, I agree with you. In the, I think it's the whole game in general. I don't know. I've never been in business or other sport, other jobs. I hear from friends, different mates that work in jobs. There's there's a bit of snakiness going on in different all parts of life. Sure, mm. all parts of jobs. Footy's definitely got that, and that's something I don't like about rugby league to be honest there's mm. that dishonesty it's very uh not all of it sorry to, how do i put that i know you mean that there's an element to it there's an element of, of of that but as you get older you realize that it's a business um and it's about winning and there's a right way to do things yeah. and there's a wrong way to do things totally agree with you but um these things happen and it's not nice you know it's the same thing with criticism in the media but the media also um, support the game and there's so much out of it that the players benefit from as players benefit from so and you see that as you get older now that I'm going into Triple M it's you're being honest and critical about what you're seeing mm. on the field and when I was a player um, you cop you know you don't win an origin series you deserve to get hammered um, yeah as I got older I didn't worry about that stuff I, when you're younger and you're a bit more insecure you, it, it affects you mm. you get a bit older you get a bit more understanding of the way it who pays your bills and how it all works and, and the whole picture, you know, you live in the dream and it's all part of it. So you, you sort of, you surrender to all that and just accept it all. Um, but yeah, there's a part of the game I still don't like. Um, you know, the, there's a lot of agendas in, 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 all, in all walks of life and, and, and sports got that. NRL, cricket, they've all got all their own little agendas, but all in all, rugby league's full of great people and the game's given me and my family a hell of a lot and we, we owe it a lot. <laughs> You so talk just, just when when you find out about Kronk, do you go into like Robbo's office and be like, bro, what the fuck? Like, do you, how do you react to that a situation like that? Me and Robbo had a chat um, around it because obviously when I when I heard the news, I've spoke about this before. Yeah, so. sorry, I don't know. No, that's fair enough. Yeah, but uh, I, I had a chat at the time. I was disappointed with how it unfolded. Uh, I understood the situation that that Cooper was coming. My decision I, there was an opportunity to stay. Yeah, at yeah. the time I was still on. It's not about. Figures, but I was on a good contract. The club still wanted me to stay. Uh, the role was going to be different. Um, I probably, I, I, after that decision, I had a few offers from other clubs, which was which was flattering. So mm -hmm. it was natural to sort of my ego was a bit dented. And then I looked around and thought there was an, there was a few opportunities. Melbourne, there was an opportunity at Manly um, when Baz was there and Cherry, yeah. and, um, and then obviously yeah, Cronulla was there. There was a few solid clubs that were thereabouts up the top that reached out so it made me sort of have a bit of a think and thought you know it might be a good opportunity to, to take a different path and that's that's sort of how it all all occurred is there a party that wish you stay when you see him win fucking back you're like oh, well now in hindsight <laughs> i go into the, the offices the other day and i got the one one trophy and they all had four or three <laughs> <laughs> i would have been happy to play off the bench run off two but yeah. you would have been the best get, 14 ever mate get, get 10 minutes off the bench <laughs> and win three comps it all looks better when you retire yeah so that's what i mean mate at the end of the day like i said i got a lot of respect for the club mm. that time was a bit of a, a hard time it was disappointing we both had our honest chats about where I was, how I saw the situation. I was disappointed. They were honest about it after the situation unfolded about where they were, where they were going, and it worked out. Um, they won two comps, and all the boys obviously speak glowingly about Cooper and his influence there. And um, yeah, I always had so much respect for Cooper. I realised the situation that he was a better player than me and um, a winner, and I was falling short. <clears throat> the thing was the year before. We fell short at Cowboys and naturally as a half you cop the criticism and um, these sort of things happen at good clubs and um, that's life. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is life. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, it was... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it is what it is, right? <laughs> what do you say? I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still, well, you're sitting here with us, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great time. Uh, it was reported in the media that the Johns brothers had a, a lot to do in whining, dining, and 69ing you up to, to Newcastle. I missed out on the 69. Oh, well, <sighs> fuck. I mean, well, you sold yourself short then, mate. <laughs> How, like, what, what are they whispering you to you to get you to, to Newcastle? 
Yeah, Maddie was uh, Maddie and Joey were obviously big um, big pushes behind going up there. Um, to be honest, the reason I went up there was obviously I spoke about the other clubs. Melbourne, I was I got a call from Cameron Smith. Did you? That was flattering. Obviously, after seriously, yeah. <laughs> the irony of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything yeah. of how that all happened. <laughs> and, um, I got a message from him. I hadn't had much to do with with Smithy, and, and got a message. Greatest player ever. Messages. You get it. <laughs> it's like. A, Hot girl messaging me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cam Smith, and uh, so I had a phone call with him, and uh, he was pretty keen. But the, the different things with their salary cap was it, I would have gone there for less money, but it was yeah. the dynamics of the top thirty and all that sort of stuff. It didn't right. sort of seem to work out, but um, I always pinch myself there that if I had gone down there, I got the opportunity to play with them. Imagine that I grand final. I would have been a way better player. I'll put it that way. I would think I would have up against the Roosters. Us yeah, in that I'm grand final, that yeah. would have been biblical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, but the thing with Newcastle was just a different. It was just a different, different thing to what I'd been used to. Like at yeah. the Roosters, we were a top two side every year. If we didn't win the comp, you're getting hammered. Yeah, it was all in hindsight. It was it was it was awesome. You know, you, that's the best highlights of my career. I look back and think about those teams and and playing in that environment. But it was like a weight off the shoulders to go to Newy. Different environment. It was like a rebuilding club. Um, Nathan Brown was really good at the time when I had the meeting. Sort of drove back down the highway. It was like a sense of freedom. Yeah, right. Called a couple of my mates and, and just said, like, there's a chance I'm, I sort of want to go there. It just feels different. Like, you go off that feel. Mm. Mm. And, um, yeah, so it had its ups and downs up there. It was obviously a different sort of environment. The club was rebuilding. But, um, but yeah, like I said, that first year, first two years, I had a great time. I loved my time up there. Is it kind of alluring when you've got Joey and Maddie whispering at you? You know what I mean? Because like you would have known them very well, I imagine, by that time through Origin or just through being a fucking professional footballer. But like having those two yarn to you, like talking to you, talking you up, getting you up there, was there something alluring about that? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, they were big. So the first, I had a good story about Joey. I was always, I looked up to Joey all my life as a kid, obviously as a half. Yeah. When the year I debuted, so my relationship started with Joey when I debuted. I was doing recovery with Anthony Minicello. He was injured when he was going through all those bad injuries. Yep. And I was like 17 or 18. I'd played about half the season that year and got injured. So we we're in the pool swimming. And I got off the, out of the pool and I looked at my phone and similar to how I had with Cam Smith, butterflies in my yeah. stomach. <laughs> I got a message from Joey saying, it's Joey, give me a ring. And at that age, Jesus Christ. He just retired. He's the greatest player of all time. Yeah. And he, you're a young half. I was like, that stuff gives you tingles, you know. I said to Minnie, is that Andrew Johns? And Minnie goes, yeah, yeah, he asked for your number. Um, so anyway, I've, I've spoke to him. About an hour and two later, I'm driving up the highway. He asked me to go up for the weekend, spend the, spend the weekend with him and um, do some, some – stay at my house. We'll do some, some – go to the park. We didn't end up getting to the park. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to the park and um, go through some plays. And so, me, so Minnie ended up picking me up in the city. We drove up. The whole time I was driving up there, I was asking him 100 questions. What's Joey like? What did, <laughs> what's Joey do? What's he? All these sort of things. Got to the Burwood. Joey's local and walked in and Joey's about day three. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> With Jack Newton, one of the other greats. Oh yeah. The, the great golfer. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So they were both sitting in the pub. So for an 18 year old kid, I was just blown away. And That's crazy, isn't it? By the end of that night, Joey had his shirt off and his undies on ball playing with the schooner glass. <laughs> I learned a lot that night, what foot to play off, <laughs> yeah. how to play unders. Um, oh, good hell. And ended up staying at his house. And so that's where our relationship started. And ever since that day, he's always been a real big fan and, fan and supported me. Yeah. Uh, and Maddie's the same. I used to go down to Maddie's house down at Collaroy when he was living down there. Uh, he might still be living there. And used to just take us out of, out of his spare time, away from any coaching and, and in media, just to go there and help out young kids. And we'd spend hours just going over ball playing. And so those both, both those guys were big influences in my career. Mm. And, you know, people probably don't see that side of them as well. Um, you know, they see them in the media and, and, and stuff they're getting paid for, but they do a lot of stuff mentoring away from stuff that people don't see. So, um, yeah, they've been big influences. And, and, yeah, going to Newcastle, obviously – with the, with the, you know, following what they say, that was a big reason why I went there as well. Yeah. It's pretty cool that they do that sort of stuff. I've heard them, I've heard it mentioned before, but like where they're just doing things again for free off their own bat. Yeah. But also like being a young half and being like, having them like approach you to be like, hey, let's just like, let us help you. Yeah. Well, it gives you belief. Yeah. You know, like when you're that age, any of your heroes talk to you. Like it's, it's like when you're a young kid coming into first grade, those older players are the ones that, either make or break you in a way. Mm. They take you under the wing and give you confidence. I was lucky when I came through, I had a lot of older senior players, Marco Mealy, Craig Fitzgibbon, Craig Wing was there, Minnie, all these boys. When I came in, you know, you got starry eyes when you're that age and 
you learn you know how to treat the young guys mm. off the off the back of your, your senior boys so i learned a lot of all those guys coming through and i was very lucky that i had a lot of good mentors were you 17 when you debuted was that 17 about that skinny it's pretty wild hey like that's we're, fucking young, we're similar yeah. ages <laughs> 17's <laughs> fucked yeah. and you it said before fucked. about how big the boys are in the nrl like it, it, it being out there playing against fully grown men at 17 is insane yeah yeah come around quick i um i played australian school boys captain the australian school boys went over to europe did a big tour a really good 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 uh good tour played really well <laughs> couldn't spit that out <laughs> <laughs> had a really good tour and came back ricky stewart was the coach so he got me to the roosters when i was 16 and uh once again you talk about people believing in you he was a big big push for me at that age especially as a young half he was a great halfback he kind of sort of invested in me gave me got me to the club threw me into the full-time squad when i was sort of 16 I, I went up and did a couple of you know part of the squad so that's pretty young um Fucking like, pretty and then young. <coughs> sticky ended up getting sacked so he left before i debuted but um he sort of yeah the year after chris anderson took over i went into the the full-time squad when i got back from the schoolboys tour and then it just all happened pretty fast just ripped into training um started obviously doing a pretty good job there and, and got a start so yeah. came around very fast but fuck yeah. yeah do you think about it now like looking back like, <coughs> i guess the I don't want this to almost sound too like uh, woo woo or but like when you think about the 17 year old kid who's coming in and to now like knowing what you know now is it like did it all happen too quickly yeah it did like even rep footy stuff yeah like I went in so I played <coughs> that played that year I played about 16 games the second year I played origin but I had a really you played big, origin so it, in tw when you're 18 years old I was just turned 19 just turned 19 so I had a big year. So the year after, so Chris Anderson was a coach. Freddie took over at the back end of that year. Yeah. So Freddie was assistant coach. Um, then next year, Freddie took over. We signed Willie Mason when Mace was coming out of his yeah. dog's prime. Mm. Yeah. Um, Ogre came, Marco Mealy. So we had like this hard senior pack. And as a young halfback, that was the best. You know, I just played in a dinner suit and just kicked the corners. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. That made you feel like Superman, those mm. boys. Um, so yeah, I had a really good year that year. And then I think there was an injury in the Origin Series, maybe Brett Kamali or... Um, one of the rotations that we're all going through. <laughs> <laughs> There's about 30 of us getting thrown around <laughs> year, year after year. Uh, um, and then, uh, yeah, there was a bit of talk about it, like leading into the series. And I came into the decider. Um, fuck, I look back, I actually played pretty good. There was lots of talk over the Origin Series and over the years, and it was good and bad. First, I put my hand up but that. But that I actually played all right. And then we got our pants pulled down with about... 10 minutes to go and lost. What so I always think that? if I had won that one, then yeah. how the road might have yeah, changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what year was that? That started the, 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 the manifestation of the losses. Yeah, yeah. shit. But um, it's life. What year was that? Do you remember? 2008. 2008, yeah. Getting thrown into a decider at 19, second year of, of first grade yeah. is so insane. Which, well, you tell you what it is. It's very New South Wales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, well, but there was, there's no fear then. Because you got nothing to lose, so I, I was actually just full of excitement. All your mates are going, you're getting thirty tickets for everyone to come to the game. Yeah. You're not, you know. And I was in a great team. Danny Badiris was his last game, so he was the captain. Wow. Um, so all these things, you're walking around with with all the old, there was a lot of older older crew yep. that were in those Origin teams early days. Um, a lot of older senior players, so I was just excited. They all took me under the wing, and mm. so there wasn't the same sort of feeling that. When you're going in after four losses, yeah. <laughs> yeah. the world's about to turn on you when you don't win. There's yeah, a, that was it. So I actually enjoyed that those early days. What you, what about you, that? Oh, sorry, you I was going to say, were you? Do you think you were ready, or do you think if you could pick a year where you think it would have been best for you to go into Origin? I would have, in hindsight, for performances and me being able to deliver better. I would have, in hindsight, it would have been great to be able to wait some time. Mm. Like I, at that time, I was just playing off instinct. I didn't have a clue about the game. Like at 18, 19, you're just you're a natural player. but um, Eyes up footy. Sort of eyes stuff. up footy, which you lose that a little bit sometimes. Sometimes it's it's good to have that. You've got that freedom like I spoke about. You don't have fear. You've got no back-to-back -back pressure. So you, you're, you're a free spirit at that age. But you, you know, I was playing against their, their halves was Thurston, Lockyer, Billy Slater, Cameron Smith. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. I remember looking at their team. They had Justin Hodges in the centres. Israel Fleon, like... Petro Simon is like the yeah. team. I was thinking about this, English. I'm a fanboy just going, in. how was I playing against them? But like history, <laughs> history will be much kinder to you than the media was at the time and the fans were at the time. Like in that, in the moment, it's like, what the fuck aren't we winning? And yeah. then you like 
with hindsight, you look back and you go, oh, like, they were against potentially, like, the greatest rugby league side ever assembled, like, these absolute generational players. Do you, was there, like, when was the point where, you know, your dreams to play NRL, your dreams to play Origin, it's all happening real quick, but then it starts to, like, shift where you start getting fucking hammered, like... Does that did that take a lot of the enjoyment out of the game for you? Yeah, it took enjoyment out um, because it it became a stress. Like I'm a competitor, I'm never someone that's going to ever dog anything, and mm. I'm privileged every time I got an opportunity to play New South Wales. It's a privilege, mm. and to get picked is an honour. So I never took that for for granted. And I'm someone who anyone who's played with me or knows me, I'm a hundred percent. I'm I'm always committed. I'm 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 never going to turn out. I always want to look in and, and give my best, um, good or bad. But so it was it was one of those things that was a, you, you, you're torn between especially after a lot of losses you're torn between proud and privileged to be there and you want and you're obviously there to win mm. and it's and it's an honor but there was always that knowing what might come if you lost yeah not consciously but it's there's a, there. there's that that there and uh you said did it take away your enjoyment there was definitely periods through my career where it was a roller coaster um I always prided myself regardless of how the series went of backing up club footy and I always felt like I did a good job at that I was I, I'd pride myself on being a resilient character and I wanted to just get back on the and do it for my teammates and it's, it's a job to do you still at the end of the day you take out all the, the bullshit you're still living the dream and yeah. you're playing first grade and you're getting paid a, a shitload of money to, to, to play, play halfback yeah so you got to remember that in and in and around all that anxiety but um there's definitely a roller coaster that goes in any all the NRL boys or any rep player now, it's a tough slog. And you see that when you retire, but it's also what you play for and you enjoy that in a sick way. Um, but yeah, when you're winning those Origin Series, I think footy and life would have been just that little bit funner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I think if you asked Thurston, you were like, mate, it was fucking yeah. amazing. You know, or Cameron Smith there yeah. because they were winning, yeah, yeah, they were winning yeah. absolutely everything. Well, let's talk about when you were brought back in, game three. 2019. 19. You and I actually on a couch together at home filming ourselves. We were. And it, and it got fucking tight at the end. Yeah. In fact, it got extremely uncomfortable. Mm. But then I like to think, and now I get to ask you, that the pass you threw was just like a culmination of your life's work. Let's like, make it sound he's I'm better not, too. Come on, let's pump it up. Pump it up. Yeah. Like, like, put some fucking music yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I'm not fucking losing this game of footy. That's what I saw. I saw yeah. a man that would just was was prepared to throw it. My mentality, honestly, that game was I'm not losing. Like, yeah. I can't lose. Yeah. <laughs> like, and uh, it, it worked out in the end. Um, I was rooming with Turbo. Yeah, obviously Manly fans. I was I was rooming with Turbo. How cool and calm is he? Oh, oh yeah. he just the man. he made my whole week super calm. He's just so natural and relaxed. And um, so I roomed with him. He was like half asleep on game day when I was like, <laughs> man, I need to win this, or I'm gonna like my life's gonna <laughs> yeah, finish. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not like his brother Jake, is he? He's yeah, a yeah. panic attack in the yeah, yeah. So um, but yeah, I ended up obviously a little combination seeing him out there and, and hit him and the work him and Fergo did. Everyone pumps my pass out. I did nothing. Mate, <laughs> you're involved did, no, you, it. you started you the threw fucking it. thing. But um, you threw yeah, it. honestly, that was that that ranks. When you finish, you think about different euphoric feelings when you played and off the field. But euphoric feelings <laughs> um, when you played and the two things that stand out for me is the grand final and that that Origin series. Um, just the just the feeling you get after the game, just the boys hugging and crying and um you know that you cannot replace that um in any other way in your life mm. grand final for me i remember just crying for 20 minutes like yeah, everyone's happy but i was just generally crying mm. i remember my mum was in the sheds and she's like what's wrong <laughs> i was like i don't even know like it's just this yes. total euphoria feeling you can't even explain yeah. and i had the same feeling when we won in 19 and um so yeah, those you know when you finish your career and you have all these you know there's games you remember just you know it might have been a local game at, at Allianz that are the highlights because one of your teammates done something great or you come up with a winning play um, you, th you think about all them but those ones are just they'll always be memories for life. Yeah. When Teddy Cross <clears throat> would just did you almost I don't I don't think I've seen footage of how you reacted. I think I went like that. <laughs> <laughs> just felt eighty thousand people. On, all through Relief. my body, yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, that team coming back, like it was e like when I say easy, it was it was it was so easy to come back in as an older guy because you just do your job. Jimmy Maloney was there; they had a big couple of games, um, and the whole team, just all those young boys that I hadn't really played with before, like Turbo, um, it was Trell, Trell. I don't think Trell played that game. I played with him at the Roosters, obviously, of course. Uh, but yeah, like 
uh, Cam Murray, all these yeah. new generations just had that much confidence. So it was just it was good good to run out from a different energy than what I'd sort of played in before where we were on the on the back end of a lot of losses. They'd yeah. come off, I think, two or three losses leading into that series. Oh, what? sorry, two or three wins. Yeah. So it was a different energy to go into. How would you describe the the difference in that energy? It was it almost when you're in that eight in a row, that sort of environment, was it just a bit more desperate almost? Or Sombre. Sombre? Yeah. It was all the early days when I played was was unreal. Like we went really close. Like everyone talks about the losses. There was there was 2011. We were one pass off uh, locking the series in because we won. We just lost in, in game one. Had a big win here. Mm. Uh, there was there were so many series there early days. And then I think back on where there was just the, the difference between one pass and one. They were they were really right? tight. One they were really the tight. Time. There was a couple there where it was super embarrassing where you'd go up. There was two. Oh, there was definitely two series. I think it was 2011 and 2015 where they beat us by about 50. Mm. And being a halfback in those teams is horrible. Um, <laughs> we had no possession. We're up there in Queensland and they just yeah. destroyed us. Yeah. But majority of those series were really tight. So there was always hope. Yes. Even though people look at the big picture and, and, and all the losses. But a lot of those series, it's, it goes down to the wire every, every series. Yeah, so every series true. you're going in with hope and you believe as a New South Wales play, uh, side you're going to win. Um, so yeah, it's it's funny when you reflect on on, on origin, especially for me. Um, people ask me now, and I could speak from it from a bit more of a of, of a laughing point of from a bit more humour. Yeah, when you're playing, it's it's pretty dark. <laughs> 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 I don't laugh at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now I can see it for what it was. Man, I was yeah. playing against some of those players you play against. Like they were so good, and uh, you take your competitive hat off when you finish. Billy Slater, Jonathan Thurston, Cooper Cronk. Darren Lockyer, like I remember playing him as an as an early player in club footy too, and they were just they were just so good, just mm. on another level. That's why they're immortals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you, you say you take your competitive hat off when you see Joey, who you know, in some like in media afterwards, like refusing to talk. You remember that series? <laughs> like, <laughs> he's just sitting there. And he's just, just like, sitting you know, there. like yeah. do you think that's what made him the greatest of all time? Is that he's just that competitive level is just so much more passionate than everyone else you know yeah so much more driven or something joey's just the most competitive person i've met yeah like in and around footy circles obviously having a lot to do with him even when you meet joey now and he watches <laughs> a game of footy it's like he's 18 still <laughs> trying to make his way yeah you know he's an immortal and the greatest devil with nothing to prove yeah and that's that fire in the belly and you hear maddie speak about that i've heard maddie speak about his brother or players uh, that have played with joey just how ruthless he was um things he'd say to teammates on the field that was never personal, but it was just like, <laughs> I am a win. Like, it's yeah. Michael Jordan style. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, Like the last dance. Yeah, mm. and it's just the passion Joey has for the game. That's something I learned early. I've always had that same passion as a, as a halfback, you know. I think any any player that's played for a long period of time, especially in the halves, if you don't have that desire and passion, you don't last. And mm. I think all the, the top shelf halves that are still playing, I'm sure Cherry and Adam Reynolds, um, Jonathan Thurston, definitely. All these guys would talk about the love they have for the game. You, you just you need that obsession to be a really good halfback, and and I learned a lot of those things or, or, or it reaffirmed things when I met Joey and those guys early. And I was like, man, they just footy's porn for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, dude. <laughs> Uh, oh fuck! That's oh, a good oh, that's good it stuff. Is. It yeah. fucking is. That's, that's so good funny. stuff. What do you think it is about Origin that, like, and I mean, there's obviously unrealistic expectations from people like us and media generally, right? Like fans, but like we don't know what we're talking about. We don't know. Well, we specifically don't know what we're talking about. But like, where you know, even like Nathan Cleary wins three like premierships back to back. He's obviously a fucking animal, <laughs> but like he just still hasn't done it in origin yet like what is it about origin like that that can prohibit someone like him from like not like proving himself there yet even though he's proved himself everywhere else or at least that being the perception yeah it's it's a, it's a hard question to answer um what is it about origin origins is such a different beast and i think each series is different each game's different um depends where your team at team is um in those series but in saying that the greatest just step up, don't they? Like, you look at Lockyer, he's, how many moments do you think of an Origin series and Lockyer's just been there? Mm. Wally Lewis, Joey. Mm. Um, Nathan's, in my opinion, just on the verge of just going just as close to all them. Yeah. Um, he hasn't been bad in Origin. What's he won? No, he hasn't been he's bad. Been, but but, but that dominance that they talk about. But, yeah. but Nathan's only... 
What's he only 25? 25. 25 26. 26. Yeah. Like he's, he's got time. Yeah, you hear talk about Joey and, and their, when they talk about origin, a lot of them speak about their best days with the back end of their 20s. Mm. Yeah. Um, so Nave's done a, a hell of a hell of a job in origin. He's, I think he's won two or three series. Yeah. And I think his best days now, with the way he's going and projecting in his career, I think the next few years he's going to be Wally Lewis style in those games. He's ahead of, he had and shoulders ahead of everyone. Fucking yeah. out of day, like yeah, three, yeah. three times. If we can stay on Nathan just for a second, I think Joey said the other night that it was the best game he's seen him play. Is that yeah, what he said? Yeah, against the Broncos. He said it after. Did you watch that game yeah. and, and what's your opinion on how he's playing at the moment? Oh, I love him. I've had a bit to do with Nathan. Tyrone Mays, his best mate, so I spent a lot of time. I was a bit of a closet Penrith fan <laughs> when I was away because i um, become really good friends with his family, obviously the three brothers. Yeah. Um, and then met a few fair few of the Penrith boys through them and obviously Nathan, so... Bit of a closet Penrith fan. I get up early and, and watch the games. Um, just his his evolution, the way he keeps just getting better. I think as a competitor or as a fan and media, everyone watches and you're waiting for chinks each year. Mm. Like we do it with everyone, or uh, you sort of watch the game and you, how they're going to go now? Is this player keep getting better? With Nathan, he just keeps getting better. Mm. And like all the great ones, he finds ways to adapt his game and improve his game and improve his teammates around him. And yeah, the grand final was obviously legendary, the way he played. But the game the other night, I think the reason Joey and that was speaking so glowingly about it was the way he played and all the subtle ball playing stuff that, that he played with and just keeps adding things to his game. And I think I said it the other day, I think like the way they're playing, like if you win three comps, you, you, most teams, well, it hasn't been, how many, how many times has it happened since like Parramatta? It, well, yeah. it hasn't happened since the 80s. The 80s, yeah. 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 But you sort of see some sort of, you know cracks or ego or lack Something. of effort areas yeah. where with them they just keep turning up week in week out and he obviously drives a lot of that with yoey there and all their senior players but man they're pretty uh pretty impressive not only players but but guys yeah well, that that try set up for uh Tungo, oh, yeah. where he's just sort of like showing and like skipping like that, <laughs> were you just yeah. like touching yourself like, <laughs> yeah. you, were all right you sevens there. out there just like that's fucking yeah, it was unbelievable. <laughs> i suppose that's the stuff you learn you know play slow tempo show and go double pump all the stuff that we you get taught as a half that's mm. the prototype of what to do as a ball player he just put it on display so might have to use that for the development <laughs> kids or the yeah, yeah, yeah. program I'm going to do. <laughs> just I, show that. Do I this, boys. Do this and you'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Were you boys in comedy or anything? Like, nah, done, mate. We you're fucking funny. You're going good, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate yeah, yeah. that. Mate, we just we went to uni together. Okay, yeah. And we just, like, the way we talk on the podcast is how we'd be talking on nights out, right? Yeah, we'd yeah. all we'd be in a corner together just fucking chewing each other's ear off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to come in and, and you know fucking yarn with us keep up or fuck off that's yeah, 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 yeah. back end of benders and shit yeah. <laughs> and then when he when we came back to sydney we didn't see each other quite as much as we did because when we were living together in bathurst yeah. uh and but oh, then he went was, to unit bathurst we went to unit bathurst yeah, yeah. yeah but he was producing at triple m so he was doing like drive or whatever the night show is or whatever and yeah. so when everyone would leave he snuck me in and we just started doing it and yeah, for yeah. five years no one gave a fuck we had like 30 listeners and yeah so you just, just build, that how it works you just build it up and we just built just it up over time you, yeah. boys. i was saying had you, had you done comedy or something oh no no nah, we were just, just explaining yeah yeah, yeah. Nah, it's fucking unreal but Thanks, mate man. yeah so that guru after, looks fuck is he just a genius he's just a, he's a hey, rugby you, league you talk about you talk about the rugby league band porn for the john he just knows everything like yeah 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 guru is just yeah. he watches every game every yeah. weekend yeah. he watches big games twice he fucking lives. he was like the 20s kids everything eh? everything yeah, dude, yeah, he yeah, watches yeah. sg ball he watches fucking yeah. harold matt he watches <laughs> new south wales cup Queensland <laughs> Cup. He watches everything. <laughs> didn't he say one day he's like i watched 11 games of rugby league in like a 12 or it was like saturday yeah it was yeah. like all the junior grades all the first yeah. grades and then watches them again to make sure he hasn't missed anything or like on sunday night he put out a podcast at like midnight. Like he was up in the studio, like going through all the game, like through the whole round, like oh, put yeah. out an hour thing. It's like he fucking grinds his dick to the bone. Yeah, well, no, he, he loves works it. real hard, but he's good. Oh, so it took you like five years to get going. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, we've been full time for three. We can go on for eight, see so five. Yeah. yeah. It right. wasn't a. It wasn't like. It wasn't. It was a hobby though. A side yeah. Project. Like yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. like we were like this is the fucking the thing we're gonna do. We just did it for fun. Yep. And then. Well, you know, people just started noticing it. Like, we also were, like, super embarrassed about, like, promoting it. Like, you know, like, hey, guys, check out my podcast. Yeah, it's you got 30 like, fucking like, listens. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's get a bit shy well, it's worked, that. mate. Yeah. Fucking love it now. Yeah. But it was just a real slow burn. And then, yeah. you know. And obviously, no one knew the fuck we were. Like, we yeah. didn't play the game. Or no. Or we, like, it's better that way anyway. Yeah. 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 And we're never trying to give out fucking nuanced 
rugby league opinion. Yeah, it's good because you can add a bit of both, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Still sweet. It's, we're emotional. We're That's passionate. Right. We are passionate. And it's speaking of passion, <coughs> 2013. Yeah, yeah we, we won. We, we contest we that, that we won that game. Yeah, we won it. And yeah. that you technically, it should read <laughs> Mitchell Pierce zero premiership. <laughs> 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 That's all I'm hanging on to. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was that? What was that week like? That that build up. You want to? How do you, how do you reflect on that? Yeah, just um, obviously two teams. Obviously, you, you boys are manly fans, but you look at the rosters from both teams. Like, honestly, like I don't think you see too many high quality teams mm. playing against each other. Like the whole team, our whole team was just unbelievable, stacked, stacked, and even manly. But you just yeah, had that yeah. crew were just unbelievable. Just the whole team. So the standard of footy. Yeah. I think we you would have watched the, the, the semi final we played. It was a four nil win to us. Yep. When we got yeah. the week off, I that went, was the I was hardest that, game. Was of that game. You beat us like five times that year. It was so <laughs> fucking annoying. Yeah. But we had great like both teams. Is like you know it was just a high quality game. But that mm. four nil win we had was the hardest game I've ever played because the standard like people would think four nil would be just a shit shit house game of footy. But like there was that much ball movement. It was just that both teams' defense was so good. So we knew what was coming in the grand final. Um, we lost in 2010. We're all young kids. Um, and as, as weird as it sounds, losing that, we're sort of just happy to be there. You obviously want to win. But when you lose, when you're young, you think it's just going to keep happening. Yeah. Like so much success was coming early, especially for me. You'd play rep footy and then you're in a grand final. We had good players. So I was like, this is just going to happen. And then it didn't for a couple of years. So when we got back in that 13 grand final, I remember being in the sheds and that was the most – Intense, I've felt a dressing room that I've been in. Like, you just see all the boys were just fucking on, mm. and the energy of the room. And, and me personally, I was like, it was a similar to that 19 <laughs> one, like, fuck, you got to win this. Yeah. Like, we got to win this. Yeah. And um, the game itself, like, it was, you're right. We, had, we were backs against the wall. Manly went in front 10 0, I think. Steve Maddow scored in my corner. I think I missed the tackle. <laughs> no, nah, I didn't. But, uh, <laughs> Steve Maddai scored, and then we went. We had 20 minutes to go to climb back into the game. Yep. Uh, I remember Sonny was Sonny Bill Williams was just uh, just huge for us. Just grabbed grabbed Immense. grabbed the boys and said, "Follow me." Um, the Wolfman had a bit of a shocker, so we just kept he tar- targeting his edge. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah he, wasn't, he wasn't comfortable under the high one, was he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, just both two quality teams, and as I said, the feeling was just so good. Yeah. What's it like when Sonny Bill comes into your? Your team was it that year or the year previous that he came? No, back? that was Sonny's first year. Yeah. What is just is he like a god walking around? He is, yeah. And especially at that age when we were younger and we all looked up to him. Mm. He's a god anyway now. Even yeah. you see him, when still you're, a god. If you're eighty and looking at him, he's still <laughs> yeah, the god. Yeah, yeah. Still got a good relationship with Sonny. Still speak to him a bit. Um, that day, that year when he came in, it was just like you talk about, and we all have those blokes that you just want to follow, and just a, a man. And at that age, he had everything, didn't he? He had the looks, the style. Yeah. Gorgeous. Who he was, the professionalism that we, like, we'll probably, at that age, we'll still finding our way, like the crew that we had coming through. Like, to be honest, the year before, we were a bit of a loose culture. Um, we are kind of still learning that professionalism type of thing. Um, and when Sonny walked in the door, you just want to follow him, you know, just going for yoga, doing yoga with him and all these sort of things that, wasn't really doing that before mm. just because he's doing it you want to do it so he just had that influence the way he trained and then just in the games just he's just in big moments you know you talk about lockyer's thurston smiths these guys that just want the ball he was a back rower but he just he would just step up in big moments like you just look at his eyes he had that eye of the tiger and he just fucking give me the ball he did that at all levels <clears throat> it delivered for us that in the in the grand final and um yeah, just a just a superstar and a champion guy, very humble. Um, I was I was blown away playing with Sonny, and it's a bit of insight to the way he is. Like you think for someone that professional after a loss, he'd sort of deal with it quite well. But he was so hard on himself after after games. Is like, that right? Yeah, like, and you speak about Joey and, and 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 any high achiever that I've played with, the best of players have all all got that trait. But Sonny was so hard on himself, and um, he take losses really personal. Um, and that rubs off, you know. Even that, as a player, you see how how much a leader cares, and that and all those little things <coughs> add up into your makeup to realise that this is the standard. The other thing with Sonny, all teams do it now. You come in with note notepads. So all the coaches, the last ten years, eight years, everyone's doing it. You come into video with a notepad. Most teams are sort of forced to do it. Mm-hmm. Sonny was the original of doing that. Is that really? Right? So he was doing all this stuff before it was cool. He'd come in with it with a notepad and 
then they, all the other boys started bringing notepads in and you know Sonny's doing it I'm going to start writing notes That's so, is that so, right yeah he'd come in and it was a bit weird at the start because no one was doing it you'd just sit in video half the boys have audio <laughs> <laughs> Sonny would come in with his notepad and he'd be writing all the specifics down and um, so yeah all those little things he, would you go and he, ask him then be like what the fuck are you doing nerd like you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you go over there and he's just drawing it yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean like do, yeah. you, do you do people just start copying him like you know the next day it's like oh I'm fucking I've always been doing it. like do you know or is it like a thing where he sort of explains to you why he's doing it or do you just like do you know what I mean like does everyone just start copying Sonny Bill like what he's doing or is there some sort of like does he start talking to you guys about why this works for him or why he does these extra things? It wasn't as much like that. We had a lot of strong personalities. Like our team, we had a lot of superstars all across the yeah. field. So, you know, and like we had Boydie there, um, Jared, all these boys all pretty staunch in their own way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Sonny just sort of went about his own business. But you definitely, like people, when you have superstars like that in your team and strong leaders, you just it just starts to f infiltrate through the team. and. Mm. Um, those specific things stood out, you know, the way, you know, going to yoga, doing all these extras. Um, a lot of the boys were doing stuff themselves, but he had a big influence on that. And the notepad stuff was definitely something I remember because mm. um, no one was doing it. You're a bit sort of hesitant at the start when you're when you're yeah. young and no one else is doing it, but he's a leader and he just went, this is what we do. And, and it's uh, I always tell people that because every team now has a notepad. The yeah. majority of every team has a notepad, and he was like the OG of no notepads. One. He was the, the original notepad yeah, guy. Yeah. What's what's a what's an upset Sonny look like after a loss? Like when you say he takes him takes him real personal. Like what's that look like? Is he in tears and shit, or is he just like down? No, just take it take it per like he just it was just um, yeah he just he'd take losses hard like like we all did. Um, but it was just something that really stood out because it was it was really hard on himself and really, um, yeah, just just really hard on himself. Some people mm. might not perceive that from some from great players. They come across um, calm and which they are, but it's just yeah, it was it was really hard on himself. The best players I've ever played with, I've got that same mentality. You know, winning's everything, and that's what you're there for. Mm. Was that a coach whisper a year, 2013? No, he wasn't. Uh, was he there? The Stubbsy? Is that what he was? Bradley? Uh, John Bradley? So I, I didn't have anything to do with him. Maybe that was 18, 19. Might have been 18, yeah. 19. Have you ever had anything to do with him? Nah. We just, uh, the other day, Kev, <laughs> he's got a book coming out and he said that he bet Kevy Walters <laughs> <laughs> that the Roosters would beat the Raiders yeah. and if the Roosters lost, he'd cut off both his pinkies. <laughs> and if the Raiders <laughs> win, Kevy had to cut off his pinky and Kevy's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, just blackmails people. Yeah, dude. I'm Pinky like, bet. Yeah. <laughs> Pinky bet. I'm like, what the fuck's this got to do with like mentalist coaching, dude? This is just like Yakuza shit cutting off your fucking <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Was um in that 2013 grand final, obviously Manly just destroy the Rabbitohs in the prelim. Was part of you wanting to play the old foe in a grand final? I think we've had that since the 20s or the 30s maybe, Rabbitohs Roosters grand final. Yeah, we, um, we would have gone close. We lost in 2014. We played, uh, we lost to Penrith in the first semi. Yeah. So we got minor premiers. That was probably, we're playing, well, best chance of going back to back because uh, it was obviously, I don't think, it, I, there was only one team that had been back to back before that. Which was like Broncos or Bulldogs. Broncos, or some I think. Shit well, it was Broncos, but it was one of the Super Leagues. So I don't know if we count that, no offense. And so the team before that, I think it was the Dogs. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of our talk going into preseason and, and all through the year, that was our goal to go back to back. Um, and we were, we were in front with about two minutes to go and there was an error at the backfield and then they ended up beating us in the first semi. So we had to do it the hard way and we ended up getting beat by South in the semi. Um, they were fresh, they were too good for us in the end. Mm. So then you would have swapped size. <coughs> yeah. So if we had won that, it's sort of had a shoulda, woulda. Yeah, yeah, it's good yeah. when you retire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can go back. But that would have been the best opportunity when I was there to have played South in the grand final. Uh, that would have been pretty cool. Do you hate them as much as like the media make out that like fucking South and Roosters hate each other? Um, you sort of want to hate them, don't you? Because it, it creates for a big uh, spectacle. There was definitely hate there. You know, even when you go around around the east, the, 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 as soon as you go past into Maroubra there, the, the <laughs> hatred starts to come in, yeah. the Bra boys. and <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got their South jerseys on there. Um, there's definitely a hatred, I reckon. Um, and the fans, when you go to the games, there's genuine... Genuine hatred with the fans and it was a punch uh, on the other night. There was actually a punch on, wasn't there? See that? No. Nah. Boys throwing down in at, the members section, the, at the members section of the game the other night. Oh, oh fuck yeah! The bottom, like I missed it. Yeah, but um, 
yeah, there was always yeah, the atmosphere there. The crowd they always sold it, sold the stadium out, and there was always a massive atmosphere. So, um, yeah, there is genuine hate there, but from the fans more than the players. Like players always respect the, their opposition. Like, and most of the time, you know the boys. But when it came to putting on the jersey, the boys were pretty serious about wanting to beat South when I was there. Mm. You are talking before about how your old man obviously played for Balmain. You're the son of a like a legend of the game. What was it? What was the? What was it like? I guess coming through. Did you enjoy that? The fact that like you were always sort of immediately compared to your old man, or just like you know that general. Was there more of an expectation? Yeah, it was funny. Like always, people ask me that question a lot now since I'm I'm older, and you know, I'm, some people don't have, grow up with a father. Some people. I was very blessed. I had two two really good parents, mm. and uh, you don't realize when you're a kid that you. Your dad's a bit of a legend. You sort of know that he was in and around footy, but I didn't realise the way he lived his life. I thought it was normal, you know, getting up at 5am. Dad was sort of a bit of ahead of his time, I suppose, when he was playing as well, the way he trained. So the way I used to watch him as I was a kid, it sort of taught me a lot of habits of how to be professional. I just thought that was normal. Mm -hmm. uh, all the way I trained and um, just everything, the way he lived his life. So, But in t on top of that, <clears throat> probably when I was a kid, I created a fair bit of insecurity subconsciously. I wouldn't walk around talking about it, but as you get old and you look back and you see different patterns of your behaviour, there was definitely some rebelling uh, in and around those those days. And it was probably subconscious, trying to be your own man. Mm. Um, that was just the way I interpreted the situation, I suppose, and created a bit of insecurity. Uh, and then obviously coming through footy and then different... Uh, criticism and that type of stuff can sort of trigger that stuff probably. So there was definitely that little bit of um, little bit of uh, way I perceived the situation. And um, But yeah, I was, I was always proud to, to, to have Dad and I'm privileged that I've been able to grow up with a father that taught me the way to, to be successful. Mm -hmm. Who do you think the best coach you played under was, in your opinion? Best for your game, best for your personality? Uh, Robbo definitely was the best coach I've had. Um, I've, uh, the thing I take out of coaches is you, you get so many different perspectives from coaches um, and you pick up different things. Um, the best guy I've come in contact with as a mentor, and I speak about him a lot, is a guy called Alan Bell. You talk about the Johns boys. They speak I was going to say, is yes. that the guy yeah, that yeah, they yeah. Maddie yeah. or Joey? Yeah. 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 So he's a really good friend of mine. Um, Johnny Lewis, the, the great boxing Probably trainer, there. actually put me on to, to Belly. Um, it was in 2014. Uh, I got in trouble with the yellow dress drama in the city. And um, and Johnny uh, came and had a chat with me and he said, mate, go on, um, I want, want you to have a chat with Alan Bell. Um, he's the smartest guy he's ever spoke to, great man. Just had so much respect in and around these these these, these, these people, the Jajon's boys and, and in and around boxing world and, and all that sort of stuff. So I started speaking to Belly and honestly, we used to speak on the phone three times a week for an hour at a time. Is that right? Um, I used to go and catch up with Belly and sit down with him and, and go over just footy notes, all the stuff that he'd given from, from Joey and Maddie and all through, the, through his coaching career. And he really took me under the wing and he was a real mentor. And he's someone I still go to now. Like anything about life, I talk to Belly. He's, he's getting older now, but um, just a big, big mentor for me and taught me a lot of stuff. And sometimes in life, like you can – just click with some people and the messages get through mm. and he was just someone who puts in puts the most complicated things so simple um he was a big big uh influence through the newtown days newtown jets um uh, newcastle setting up newcastle that's where the johns boys had a fair bit to do with him so he's got a lot of respect in the game but for him to sort of take me under the wing give me a lot of time and yeah we've had a really good friendship and relationship so he's the, he's probably the guy i've learned more than anything off away from footy but as far as a head coach, Trent Robinson would be the best coach I've had. Right. Uh, just highly intelligent, um, just to create a winning environment, and I played my best footy under him. You've mentioned in this interview how much of an impact like mentors and ex-players and senior players have had on your career to date or your career generally. Is that why you're, you're feeling this like this urge to give back and, and mentor the next generation because of how you were treated by the people you've mentioned? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I I think so. Yeah, I think um, I've always tried to, you know, be there for younger boys, and uh, it's, it's our duty, isn't it, as 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 men to pass on your knowledge and look after each other. And um, you know, I think I've got a lot to to give back. I think when I was playing, I always tried to look after the youngest guy that was in the squad, and because um, that was the kind of nurturing that I got when I came through. Mm -hmm. And you know, you respect your elders, and 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 you learn off older people. I've always gravitated in my life to older men. 
like Belly, for instance, yeah. or these type of people, because that's where you learn your most knowledge. You know, I'm always open ears to, to anyone that's – I've just gravitated to older blokes. I love hearing stories and yeah. learning. That's just the personality I am, maybe the way I was raised. Um, but, yeah, I'd love, to, I'd love to give back a mentor where I can, and um, I've made some changes in my life and, and, and feel like I've, I've been through good and bad. So that's definitely a path I'd like to go down. Now you're in the media. Now you're now you're on the other side, the dark side, you might call it. Uh, <laughs> how are you going to go, given your own experiences as a player, like criticizing, for lack of a better word, yeah. players generally? Like, it, it, have you thought about how you'll go about that, or like the way that you'll approach those moments when you have to be critical? Yeah, I think being honest is is is, is the key, isn't it? Like, even when I was playing, like it's you're there to be honest. It's it's no different when you're playing footy. You're in or with you, with your mates, with your boys. Like, you're, you're honest with each other. It's honesty and trust is where it's built. And I think when I was playing, if you're in a good system, when you when everyone's honest with each other, that's just the way it works. So I think you'll have to teach me. But I suppose when I'm doing the commentary or... You'll learn nothing from us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think going down that path of just being honest about how you see things is the way to go. Um, I'm only learning. It's a great opportunity. I did my first game on the weekend and, um, you know... It's good to, from an ex-halfback watching games, you see things, obviously, how you would have done things. or So you just say it how it is, I suppose. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I think the thing with the media, majority of the media when you're playing is positive. Like, at the end of the day, the media is supporting the game. Yep. The players get a hell of a lot out of it. Um, majority of it's positive. There's obviously, like we spoke about earlier, there's agendas in everything. And every now and then there's a couple of low blows. The off-field stuff, I find, <coughs> with the sponsors and everything now, you understand that that's part and parcel. But... There's always some agendas that people ram home a bit harder with with some things and yeah. overdo the boys like boys fuck ups, mm. um, you know that's just part of life. But yeah, I'd, I'd like, like to just be honest about things, I suppose, and say say, say it how I see it. I'm stuttering. It's probably uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad way to go about it though. Just tell the truth and be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he's, the, I, I don't he's know shit. <laughs> well, I don't know who the journo was. It was like, oh, Jackson Hastings, mate. He just like he he got oh, dropped yeah. and he purposely missed fucking New South Wales Cup training. Comes out it was complete bullshit. Like yeah, right. just didn't happen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so after, got, after he got dropped, yeah. they were like, oh yeah, he was uh, he was given the opportunity to go and train with the Cup side, and he's like, no, nah, I'm going home. And then it was like, oh no, they actually weren't even training, and <laughs> yeah, he right. just went home. <laughs> and you're just like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. That's like so <laughs> unnecessary. Yeah, mm. that sort of stuff. That's what I was saying. Like when there's an agenda like that. That's as a player. That's when, as players, that's when you get the shits. I think yeah. the truth's not right, or there's rumors coming out that are affecting your reputation. Yeah, or, yeah, that stuff's not fair. That's that's just a lie. If you've done the wrong thing, I've done plenty of them, and it's you know you understand that it's it's justified most of the time. Sometimes it's extended a little bit, mm. and over, a bit of salt and pepper thrown on the top, but mm. always majority of the time, um, you understand if you've done the wrong thing. But yeah, the lies is. The lies are not. Like, Have you ever had to ideal. fucking confront a journo? Like, oi, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> um, trying to think. You ever bent Teo to bloke? Oh, yeah, what but he do? do. Oh, he just told <laughs> us he was. <laughs> oh, he had him a and Danny Wilde had, had a Danny bit Wilde of a Wilde fucking. Ones. Oh, yeah. He's a good man, Ben Teo. Yeah, I don't really know him that well. Yeah, no, he's great really man. Yeah, funny. Yeah. There was a, well, there was a video came out like back when he was playing for South <laughs> and Teo and, and, and Danny's like there to try and do like the media scrum and Ben's just going. No one's going to talk to you, mate. No one likes you here. Just you pizzling him. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. off. Smashed him too. Like, oh, my God. In front of everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah everyone. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, in front of the media scrum. It's yeah, great yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. great footage. It's really, really funny stuff. stuff. Um, mate, thanks for coming on. It's been, it's been really nice to meet you and here, you know, have a bit more of a chat. So you've obviously got an interesting story. And, like, I think to your – like, what you're sort of – like, you've got a lot of uh, knowledge to pass on to younger players because of – the way your career's gone up and down, right? Like there's you, you, there's almost no one better to be able to sort of speak, like nurse younger players through the uh, what I imagine is a fucking hurricane of like life <laughs> yeah, when you become a it. professional hurricane. footballer. But um, yeah, mate, we really appreciate it. Good luck. Go well with the footy and the podcast, talking footy, you and Toddy Carney. Footy talk. Yeah. Footy, footy talk, talk, sorry. Mondays. And uh, yeah, is, is it talking about the games on the weekend? Are you talking about footy generally, about life? What's the sort of... Yeah, at the moment, we're just talking uh, footy. Yep. Just on wrap-ups from the game. Adam Peacock does the host there on yeah, the Triple yeah. M, so on Monday. So, nice. But no, it's been good for me and Toddy. We're, we're great mates from footy days, and um, it's good to reconnect. Both had our dramas, and Toddy's doing really well. He's been sober for nearly two years now. Oh, How's sick. Uh, he's going well. He's got a, got a little one, and uh, life's flowing for him. Doing a lot of work with troubled kids up in Queensland as well. Good on him. Back a lot and doing doing some really good stuff. So it's good for us to connect on there. And I love you, you boys too. It's Thanks, man. I had a good laugh. I was in Bali and I was on the lounge. 
sitting there watching some of your stuff for a while. So <laughs> keep us laughing. Yeah, man, thanks, we'll, mate. We'll, we'll do our best. Well, anyway, all the best with it. And thanks for coming on. Thanks very much. Good man. Beauty. Cheers. Thank you. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>